You might think that Japan would excel in software. After all, they brought the world Kaizen, the practice of continuous incremental improvement. But Japan hasn't been able to operate on the leading edge of software development. Many economists actually point to Japan's weakness in software as the single biggest factor in the country's competitive decline relative to the United States. One study found that US firms that improved their performance over the 1990s made the biggest improvements in the areas where software was most critical. Think about so many of the electronics goods that we associate with the era of Japanese dominance. Personal entertainment devices like the Sony Walkman or the Nintendo Game Boy. Cameras made by companies like Nikon. Reliable, efficient cars like the Toyota Corolla. These are all great products that drew on Japan's superiority in craft manufacturing. But they were all fundamentally mechanical products. They relied on hardware, not software. So as software changed our tastes and created a new class of products, many of these mechanical goods and the companies that made them were left behind. Think about it. Do you own a standalone radio or digital camera today? Or do you just use your American or Chinese made smartphone? What about your TV? Was it made in Japan or South Korea? Japan's economic collapse in the 1990s was so devastating and traumatic that the Japanese people refer to it as the lost decade. Although today, it's probably more accurate to say lost decades. What did it look like? Let's paint a picture. Japan's economic growth slowed, almost to half. Its market share in critical industries like semiconductors plummeted. And it meant that Japanese electronics companies, which had been ascendant until recently, started to become irrelevant. In 2005, when Apple built the iPod, Steve Jobs needed to be in Japan regularly because Japanese companies produced 70% of the parts. They were some of Apple's key suppliers. But just five years later, Apple had shifted their manufacturing strategy away from Japan and toward China. This led to the iPad using only 20% Japanese parts. Remember how I said earlier that in 1989, 32 of the world's top 50 companies by market cap were Japanese? Well, by 2018, there was just one, Toyota. The central preoccupation of Japanese politics since the lost decade has been to revive the dynamic culture of economic growth that was once a secular religion. But despite the best efforts of leaders like the late Abe Shinzo, who spent his second prime ministership trying to stimulate the economy, the sleeping giant wouldn't wait. Why? Because in addition to those huge changes I mentioned, there are other factors which weigh heavily against Japan. The first is demographics. Japan is really old. It sells more adult diapers than baby diapers. The baby boom generation born in the late 1940s and 50s is retiring, and there aren't enough young people to replace them. In 2014, Japan's population was 127 million. At current rates, that's expected to shift to 107 million by 2040 and 97 million by 2050. How can you be expected to be at the forefront of the ideas and technologies shaping the future if you're too old to take advantage of those opportunities? Japan's demographic challenge is closely related to another problem, the country's reluctance to admit new people and new ideas those people bring. The US isn't perfect, but it still boasts an un- まあ、財務省さん、あなたはどこの国に引くんですかと。誰が得するんですかって言ったら、ね、5000億の国でしょ、今だったら。北海道だってどんどんどんどん乗っ取られてるわけじゃないですか。財務省のやってることってね、日本